Well, hello everybody and welcome to another rowing chat. I'm Rebecca Caro and today I am joined by two rowing entrepreneurs from Finland. Welcome to Christina Bjorknas and Penti Soini from Quiska Rowing App. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Now, would you both like to introduce yourselves to the listeners and tell them a little bit about yourselves and your personal background in rowing? Yes, so maybe I go first. Um, as Rebecca said, my name is Christina. I learned to row in England while I was doing my my PhD um, at Oxford University. And I, I fell in love with the sport and I have been rowing ever since. Um, and then uh, four years ago, we started uh, Kuiske, uh, this rowing startup, and we've been de developing the rowing measurement technology ever ever since. And we also have been rowing together for many years in many different types of boats, bo both indoors as well as on water. Okay, my name is uh, Pena, and I started rowing about 30 years ago uh with indoor so i have been row rowing all, all this uh 30 years different boat classes and um and uh, uh also finnish wooden boat and uh and uh, olympic boats and lastly coastal boats too and i have had some uh, world records even in uh, uh 100 kilometers rowing, indoor rowing, and 24 hours rowing. So I have been a kind of indoor row, row originally, but yes, that's uh, that's me. So I'm fascinated at the diversity of rowing. So tell us a bit, little bit more about where you live in Finland in your club and, and about rowing in Finland more generally. Uh, Finland is great for rowing because we have uh, many lakes. And we also have the Baltic Sea. Um, we are um, members actually in a number of rowing clubs, uh, mainly in the Keravan Urheilijat Rowing Club, uh, where we row wooden Finnish traditional boats and coastal boats and also uh, indoor ergs, Concept 2s, Concept 2s on slides and also RP3 rowing machines. Um, and then our company, Kuiske, we uh, arranged the, the Coastal Finnish Championships, which uh, happened um, a month ago, which which was a lot of fun just outside of Helsinki. So we're rowing both on the on the sea, in the Baltic Sea, as well as on lakes here in and around of, um, Helsinki. Yeah. And the sea and freezes in winter. Sorry? Does the sea freeze in winter? Ah, yes, <laughs> it does. That's why there's a, that's a very good question because in Finland, the indoor rowing season is very long because we simply can't go rowing on water. Finland is great for rowing on water in the summer, of course, lots of water to row on, beautiful scenery. So you should you should come here and, and row in Finland. But in the, fin in the winter, there's there's no choice. You have to row indoors. Yeah, and so does it freeze from November? Is it fro it's not frozen now because you just had the no. championships? Yeah, it, it depends. Uh, three years ago, we were rowing on Christmas Eve still, so it really depends on the on the weather. But there are a, a number of months uh, where where the sea is completely frozen, and then it's it's really not pleasant to row when it's uh, rainy and dark and cold, yeah. even if it isn't frozen. Yeah. And of course, we have been we have been organizing also this Erga Marathon like yeah. uh, a couple of years right now, and it's world's largest Erga Marathon event, in fact. And the last year, we had also categories for slides and RP3 there. Congratulations! So I think there are a lot of people around the world who can empathize with rowing in the dark and the rain. We all do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just varying degrees of darkness and raininess. <laughs> Now, let's move on to talking a little bit about what is Quisca and tell us about your journey from the four years to today. Yeah, so uh, Quisca is a Finnish rowing company 
um, we started um, together now already four years ago, uh, first developing a, a first generation pod, which we started with uh, measuring just the oars in Finnish wooden boat. Uh, and from there, we have evolved both the software as well as the, uh, the sensor, the pod, which uh, nowadays looks like uh, that. Uh, to work both uh, on oars on water as well as on the seats in the boat and on the indoor rowing machines of various different types. Um, so we've done quite a lot in, in these four years with our, our small team. Yes, and, and lately we, have, we are a little bit more kind of focused on the, on the indoor because indoor we have a virt implemented virtual coach which kind of guides you to the right technique. Brilliant. So you are a technology company that specializes in interpreting the movement both of the body and of, you said, the oars and the seat. Uh, yeah, we mentioned we measure kinematics. So that's a, a question we often get is whether we measure power, which we don't. So we measure technique, rhythm, uh, metrics so uh, we can measure the timing of the oars versus the seat um, in in a boat and uh, on the indoor rowing machine we can measure the whole style of your rowing by combining the the handle with the seat movement let's talk a little bit now about indoor rowing and how you use the app in indoor so are you able to show us exactly what happens yes absolutely so let's um, share a, a picture of our um, app um, which you can now sh see there this is showing the Kuiske rowing uh, app virtual coach as it looks like while rowing so you can see there's a number of colored balls there um, and what it does, it gives instant feedback to you while you're uh, uh, rowing uh, on, on your technique every single stroke. So those balls with the colors are updated every stroke. And then you are able to adjust your technique while you are rowing. Um, so maybe I could talk through those, those balls, what, mm -hmm. what they are. So now we're on the, on the concept two, as you can see which is the most popular uh, indoor rowing machine. Um, and uh, we do support other machines as well, though. Um, so the first ball there shows the rhythm. This is something actually that you can also measure uh, even without a pod. But maybe I should start by telling what, what we have here. So uh, the, to measure indoor rowing, you need to have a phone first placed on the handle of the indoor rowing machine. And then you place a pod on the seat of the indoor rowing machine. And then we are able to combine the data from those two. So we send uh, data at 100 Hertz from the, the pod in the seat to the phone and uh, combine the data to uh, analyze the rowing technique in detail. And what you're able to get is the full rhythm of your rowing as well as uh, your leg speed that correlates with the muscle in your legs, how fast you're able to push the seat away. We measure um, the rhythm of your leg drive. We also measure how long the seat is stationary. That measures how segmented your rowing style is, how much swing you have in your rowing technique. And then we measure the style. That's the, the final bubble here. Uh, which is up here at the back. This shows how uh, front-loaded your uh, drive is. Um, is. Is that um, is that a good thing to have a front-loaded drive? Yeah, that's a, also a, a good question. I think that's up to the coach to decide. Um, this uh, virtual coach uh, that we have developed here says that yes, it is uh, a good thing to have a front-loaded. Uh, drive to to push fast with your legs uh, quite early on, on during during the drive, and then to have a, a segment clearly segmented style such that you open your back uh, only after you have reached your maximum velocity with your legs and finally your arms. So that's the kind of style that the 
Quizke virtual coach promotes. But in fact, um, if you, for some reason, reason as a coach, disagree with that kind of style, then you can also um, use your own style. And in fact, you can you can tune the metrics to suit uh, your own coaching style. But yes, we promote a segmented, front-loaded um, style. And a static uh, concept too, which we are showing in this uh, this picture, is a pretty easy to measure uh, based on that there are only two moving parts. It's the seat and it's a handle. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to measure anything else when you know the kind, you have a domain knowledge, uh, how, what is the kind of way it, uh, it, it works. And mm -hmm. we have this uh, uh, number five style indicator there in the, in the back. It, it really kind of measures that when you start your moving your back, and uh, there is, uh, that is the kind of how we also uh, uh, are able to separate that when it's front loaded, when you are doing the work with your uh, legs and when you are starting with your back. Talk us through the uh, metrics on the right hand side of the image. Um, yeah, so, so you also get numerical metrics here. If you press start, uh, in the app up here, then the chrono starts uh, running. So that measures how long you have been rowing for. Um, and then you get, of course, the stroke rate um, updated with every stroke. And then we have uh, a focus tile, which shows actually what you should target. So in this case, um, uh, the target tile shows that in order to reach uh, green style, you should um, have your uh, max leg uh, uh, metric at less than 32 too. So this is really for people who are interested in, in improving their technique so that they can check what the ranges for this virtual coach is and try to reach them. Um, and the rhythm uh, metric here um, shows uh, the ratio of, of your drive over the full uh, stroke. Um, and you can choose yourself which metric you want to uh, have the virtual coach uh, limits visible for mm -hmm. here in, in this, this um, tile. Yeah, and during rowing, of course, it's important to understand where uh, what this, uh, what this uh, ball is meaning. But the most important thing is the color. So the green color, mean, uh, green color means that that is OK. Yellow is that you are going to the right direction. Then we originally had a, a red color meaning that that uh, technique from that aspect is not kind of uh, very good. But we learned that the rowers would not like to see anything bad like red. So we removed that color. So it means that if some, uh, some of these uh, aspect, uh, points is not kind of optimum, there's no color. So we have yeah. a yellow and, um, and a green color. And then we have this uh, uh, MOC indicator. You can, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but that was, as as Pente said, we had customer feedback regarding these uh, balls that there must be no red because then people clearly they are not motivated to continue rowing. They don't want to see red while rowing. But after you have finished, we produce a summary screen which shows how well you did. Then we do show if something was red because I think yes. well, and the customers as well said that it's okay to see it afterwards because then you can focus more on that next time. And then we have this, this um, corner up here where you get thumbs up or even a heart if you uh, row with um, a good technique for a number of uh, eight to 10 strokes uh, consecutively. Um, so this, we have had very good feedback on this virtual coach with a, with a very easy to understand um, uh, UI where um, for uh, coaches, uh, we have had, um, uh, we started with a uh, much more technical view where you get the full data uh, rather than those um, colored uh, visualizations of the different areas. So if you swipe in our uh, app, if you swipe left in our app, you do get this more technical view which some people also like to see. So here you get the full uh, data in terms of the, the, the speed of the seat, that's the red mm -hmm. one, and the speed of the handle uh, during drive and recovery. And here 
uh, if you're experienced with looking at indoor rowing data, you can see a lot of things in this data. Plus, we also provide the numerical metrics for the, the curve. So this is the for the, uh, the data nerds amongst us rowers. Could you talk us around all of the numbers and then finish on explaining the graph? Yes. Uh, yeah, so um, if if um, if you want more than uh, just the um, uh, the visualizations of, of the technique, then uh, uh, you get uh, here uh, the um, the stroke rate. You get the um, the length of your stroke. Uh, then you get the maximum speed of the handle. So as said, to measure the um, rowing, you need to have a phone on the, the handle mm -hmm. and then the pod on the seat. So that's why you get the, the handle and the seat speeds. Um, you get the maximum seat speed. This correlates very much with the uh, the strength in your legs. So um, a, a smaller person would not get so much, um, uh, such a high speed. Uh, there, and also if you have a high drag factor, then that influences your maximum seat speed as well. Um, then the seat stop metric—that's uh, very important. It sh it shows how long during the entire uh, duration of a stroke that the seat is stationary. Uh, so in this particular case, 47% of the full stroke time, the seat is stopped. Um, then the rhythm, 31%, uh, is, is the ratio of the drive uh, mm -hmm. over the full stroke time. The seat rhythm is the, the same for, um, for the seat. So how long the seat is uh, driving over the full stroke time. And then we have the timing of the seat uh, in relation to the timing of the handle. So that if you slip your slide, that won't be 1.1, it'll be 1.5 or more. Uh, so it, it shows whether you are doing um, uh, bum shoving or... Um, mm. I, yeah. yeah. So in, in this case here, um, we see that the seat time is is, is 1.1 so that's the difference between the uh, between the blue and the uh, and the red uh, yeah. curve Me meaning that the uh, meaning that the seat is starting a little bit before the handle and that is a kind of right target so not a big difference but the small one so you should start first moves the seat and then handle just a little bit so of course if it starts too much before then that's <laughs> that's no good that's bump shooting yeah. that's bump shooting or whatever it's called um and uh then in this graph we have the the blue graph is is the movement the speed of the handle um so when the the speed is positive then it's um it means it's moving in the driving direction and when it's negative then it's moving backwards is so then we're in recovery um, mm -hmm. and the same for the the seat when the seat that's the red red graph here when the seat is positive it's moving in the driving direction so this is the the seat um speed in is positive in the driving direction and then here long duration here the seat is stationary uh, before it starts returning back to catch. Mm -hmm. And uh, you wouldn't believe that different type of uh, uh, rowing techniques there are <laughs> indoors <laughs> and, and how different they look. I mean, this mm -hmm. this is just a graph, but, but when you look at many of these graphs, you can start to read, uh, you can see what the rowing looks like just by looking at the graph, because if Many people at gyms, for example, they don't have any backstop at all with the seat. So the seat just goes back and forth. Then, of course, the seat stopped is virtually zero. Um, and there's there's a lot you can read from, from mm -hmm. this data. And especially the recovery phase. Uh, so you are seeing that the uh, red line and the blue line in the recovery, at the end of the recovery, they are kind of, uh, those lines are going together, meaning that the, your whole package is moving at the same time to the to the next catch, which which is a kind of good thing, and uh, 
quite many people I be are seeing that they are not in line that much. And this happens in real time while you're rowing every stroke. Yeah, so you see the previous uh, stroke um, while you're rowing and then you're able to see how uh, small changes in your body, how that can affect your uh, the outcome of, of these different uh, metrics. Um, so the reason, of course, that we made this app was to help people row better so they, that they can enjoy rowing more, so mm -hmm. that they can uh, row indoors for longer. Uh, so <laughs> in Finland, when you go to any gym, uh, there are Concept2 machines in all gyms virtually in, in Finland. But people do not stay on the indoor rowing machines for very long because they simply can't because they just go back and forth mm. there, which is quite painful. There's no proper recovery phase. Um, and with this app, you can, you can really learn to... Uh, uh, row with a good flow so that you can um, you can do longer distances without uh, dying. Uh -huh. and, and also for those kind of uh, more pro rowers, when you are sitting more in the indoor, your technique is start to go into the kind of not that good direction easily, especially if you are using static ergo. So mm -hmm. this is a way to keep your uh, technique right. And when you are uh, when you are going after the ergo to the uh, on on the water. It's easier to find the right technique and keep that in the indoor. Yes, I can definitely see the benefits for that. Now, tell us about the yellow square on the slide. Uh, that is there to show uh, really um, what is the drive phase and what's the the uh, recovery uh, phase uh, uh, within um, for for the for the um, the swing part. So um, this is not in our app, uh, but we just put this here because most people oh. don't understand what, what it means that it's positive and negative. That is, that is what it's. So this, this was the original screen which we started to share and people, I mean, all the pro rowers understood this, but uh, for for kind of beginners, it was really, really, uh, difficult to understand and that's why we make the uh, new ui the kind of main ui and current ui is the kind of third generation i think mm. so it's a long story yeah so we, we are trying to uh, promote a rowing style where as i said earlier which is segmented where large uh, swing so that you keep your your um, seats stationary allowing your body to uh, to rock uh, properly um, because then you can have a longer um, stroke. And of course, you can then benefit from this also uh, on water. So um, uh, although this app is suitable for uh, novices in the gym, it's, it's uh, certainly great for uh, athletes, rowers as well, who want to perfect their technique and also for a crew who want to synchronize their technique so that they all uh, row with the, the same timing and same kind of um, swing. Mm. And, and simply push, not pull, which is quite a difficult to do with the static ergo, but we are supporting the dynamic ones also. The curves are a little bit different there, but, uh, but still the push, not pull. That's so important as a coach. I totally support push, not pull. Now, we have um, um, a third person who, a fourth person who should be here today, who's called Neil Bergenroth. And, and Neil sadly can't be with us. He's a coach in the States who has been using the Fisker app for quite a long time. And he sent us some remarks, which I'm going to pitch in here. And he talks about remote coaching because he's a professional paid coach. And he says, I sometimes cannot be physically present for my remote clients. And so it's challenging to monitor their technique regularly. The Quisca app and pod accompanied by the cloud-based analytics accomplish two essential aspects to providing a coaching solution. Firstly, the virtual coach never misses a stroke. Now that's the part of the app. There's no place to hide. And the app and pod constantly monitor the uh, technical points that we want the athlete to improve. 
And so when I plan a training schedule for an athlete, it contains the work they need to improve physiologically and mentally. And with so many strokes pulled without feedback, he thinks there's a tendency sometimes for the athlete's technique to degrade over time if it's not checked. And he calls this technique or technical entropy, which I think is a very useful phrase because personally, I know I've definitely sat on the erg and noticed not just the scores are generating, that as I get tired and work harder to maintain the scores, I know I'm not rowing so well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would also agree with that. So we do um, long rowing sessions here, because I said we do the rowing marathon and also our rowing races in Finland are quite long. For example, we do a 58 kilometer race every July. Um, and uh, when measuring technique over these long distances, you can certainly see what happens uh, when you get fatigued. Um, so, so you see a decrease in your uh, leg power as, as a decrease in the seat speed. Um, and also you can see how your uh, oar angles um, get uh, uh, shorter while your stroke rate increases. <laughs> so when you get that data and the, and the instant feedback, you can you can work to um, push harder with your legs and just it reminds you is it helps helps you focus on on a good leg push and a, a, a good uh, rhythm so that you don't rush on recovery even when you're uh, getting tired talk to us a little bit about using the app on the water mm -hmm. yeah so that? yeah so this same uh, pod here um, you can put it um, also on the boat. In fact, I, I have a picture uh, of that I could um, share um, on the screen there. It helps to explain it then. This is a picture of our first generation pod, um, which has the same functionality, but we 3D printed those ourselves. Um, the pod is here uh, put on uh, next to the oarlock, as you can see. And again, we have uh, the phone with the Quisca rowing app uh, running attached to the, the boat. It's important here that the, uh, the phone is attached really well because we use the um, uh, phone to measure the boat acceleration uh, mm -hmm. and we also take the GPS from, from the phone and, and we need high quality uh, boat acceleration data um, which we synchronize with the data from the pod um, the data from the pod can come either from the oar, like here, or then it can come from the seat. Um, and uh, depending on the location, we either measure the uh, the oar angles and the full uh, flight path of, of the oar. Um, so how high it flies and how deep it dives and the full angle. Um, and uh, we measure the angular velocity both during the drive as well as during recovery. So meaning that we measure the um, the technique over the full stroke, not just the, the drive. And the same for the seat. Uh, if the pod is on the seat, we measure the, the, the leg drive, how long you're at backstop and then how fast you recover. So similar as, as on, the, uh, on the ERG. I think the flight path description is very apt. Mm -hmm. um, I think I actually have a picture of that as well, of a picture of, of the flight path. Let me see if I quickly find... Oh, yeah, this is a, an old, old picture of myself in my pink boat here. They're showing a, a flight path, which is not so optimum, if you could maybe share my, my picture here. Yeah, great. Um, so there you can see uh, uh, possibly a bit of washing here. So it shows this is this is the catch where the blade uh, goes into the water and then it's, uh, it's the finish is here. A bit of washing because it's quite thin up here. Should be mm. a bit fatter. Um, the recovery is quite nice and flat here, but there is this kind of a duck's or a dolphin's head showing a bit mm. of skying. Uh, before before the catch. So yeah, the, the blade flight path is, is certainly um, quite interesting. Um, uh, and uh, it re reveals a lot of 
novice novice issues. Absolutely. I can definitely see that. So let's talk through some of the analysis that a coach can provide when using the app because you have cloud data storage, don't you? So mm -hmm. that you can upload locally stored data after the session. Yes. So all of the data, be it indoors or uh, on water, um, you can record it um, by pressing start in the app. And then once you're finished, you can upload the data to uh, the cloud. Um, and in the cloud, you can um, analyze the data even stroke by stroke. So we, in fact, we send all data to the, the cloud, quite a massive amount of data mm -hmm. because uh, there's 100 hertz, so 100 samples mm. per second. Uh, from from two, two uh, sensors, in, in fact, and one stroke takes about three seconds like that, so it's a huge number of raw data there. Yeah, so you're able to then look at the data stroke by stroke, or uh, then we recommend looking at an average stroke over uh, a, a typical session. So if you're doing steady state or if you're doing some kind of a piece, then you can choose that piece. Uh, so paint over the, uh, the area that you're interested in and get an average uh, average boat acceleration, average uh, blade flight path, and also get the the speed of the uh, the angular speed of the oar, how it moves during drive and and recovery, and that reveals so much about technique. For example, you can see in a crew if someone is um, is is uh, late or early, or uh, if they. Um, don't stop at finish uh, like the others or uh, moves their hands uh, in, in a different way um, at, at, um, uh, at, at when they're going into recovery. So mm -hmm. by overlaying data from different rowers, you can see much more uh, from the data than what you could see with your um, eyes, both for in in respect for the uh, both for the oars as well as for the, the seat. Um, so if, when you overlay the seat data from uh, rowers in a crew, you can see if if someone is rushing on the seat and uh, if if someone has a very um, uh, not so strong uh, push, but uh, if it's a very prolonged. A drive with the legs a um, slow one that's um, it's it's quite insightful to compare yeah. rowing data in yeah and and uh, uh, <clears throat> the boat acceleration uh, information is also very important for example we were two weeks ago we started to in investigate more this uh, kind of uh, hang and bang thing which is uh, coming from Greg Manson and that this hang and bang is very easy to recognize from the, the boat speed uh, a boat acceleration curve when you are overlaying a kind of two technique together and we even write a blog about that yeah yeah so uh, there's... We'll put a link. sorry we'll put a link to the blog in the show notes yes yeah thank you great let's read a little bit more from uh neil bergenroth about his uh, insights into using the cloud-based system. He says he can efficiently review technique and provide targeted feedback. And this takes far less time than reviewing video and also has the benefit of taking the form of being quantitative measurement. Additionally, cloud analytics allows me to compare the technique of an athlete at the beginning and the end of a rowing workout. Therefore, as the duration progresses, if the athlete's technique is breaking down over time and under stress, he can very quickly see this is occurring. And he believes it really does help the athlete to hack their technique with the metrics provided. However, it's vitally important that the athlete feels what the changes are and creates the self-awareness to hold their technical model once they've made the virtual coach happy inside the app. That's presumably quite a common feeling from your uh, coaching users. Yep. Yeah, people like this, um, um, the virtual coach, with it's very easy to understand visual feedback, which helps 
it really helps when you do a longer workout to um, especially to not rush on recovery i think that's the most common issue mm. or what do you think yeah i agree i agree so you talked a little bit about different styles of technique that are possible obviously we know that because we've all rode with different people who do different things um using the app how does it help you compare different techniques so using the app when you're using the app then you are relying on uh, instant feedback so then in a crew say you are in a double then uh, you first go rowing both measuring there uh, with with the app and then afterwards upload to the uh, the the portal and then you can really see what the differences in the technique are even if you don't have someone videoing from the side and and you can get see much much more from the data than you would from from the video um, so then you can see differences in in timing of the seat and possibly you can make changes in the rigging based on the uh, data um, and then once you know what the differences are and what you need to work on, say someone needs to have a, a, a sharper leg drive or make sure that they don't uh, rush uh, their seat on recovery, then after that, the instant feedback is, is great the next time you go rowing together, because then you can focus specifically on, on that issue, which you have seen is, is what needs work, work on, what needs to be done. So when you're in a, a boat or on the erg, it helps to have each athlete having a Quisca pod and a phone. Uh, yeah, that's a good question we often get. It's actually, it's not necessary. Of course, if you are a, a, a dedicated double, then it's nice to have your own. But in fact, um, technique is it's like your it's like a signature. It's, it's quite hard to change. So um, you can measure uh, a crew using just one pod in fact during a steady state outing and then you can compare the technique afterwards even if you are not measuring the different rowers exactly at the same time you can still see what the technique signature is at a specific stroke rate and then uh, make changes as necessary based on what you see from the data yeah, as long as the conditions and stroke per minute is, is, is the same. Uh, understood, yes. So you, you must be consistent. Tell me a little bit more about the different rowing machines that you have successfully used the app over. You mentioned Concept 2, Concept 2 on sliders and RP3. How do these show up as being different in actual practical use? So how they are different in actual practical use uh, for from measuring point of view, or uh, how do you, how do you for mean? Coaching. Uh, for coaching. For coaching. coaching. Mm. Okay. Um, well, first maybe we need to say that for well, if you are are an on water rower, then we do promote the dynamic uh, versions so so the rp3 or also the concept 2 on slides is 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 better than static concept 2 for learning proper technique on on water uh, but of course the concept the static concept 2 is a great tool for a workout <laughs> mm. But yeah, the, we, we measure all three of these. We have also measured uh, water rowers and in fact, some other machines as well, the Ortec we have uh, modeled. So with the uh, Quizka yeah. system- you And can, even water rower. Yeah, water rower, yes. Mm -hmm. So they, we, can, uh, we can measure uh, any machine really and, and provide the uh, good parameters mm -hmm. to uh, strive for with any, any machine. Um, and what you're looking for there, um, it's if you if you're a coach, then you can you can tune the virtual coach to suit your needs. I'm I'm not sure if I answered your question. We, we have a we have a kind of um, separate uh, parameters for different rowing types. So the UI during the rowing 
is uh, pretty much the same for uh, it's independent on the row rowing machine model but we have tuned our application so when you start the application you first need to select your row type so in ah. indoor there are three selections and after that there is a uh, sculling and uh, and uh, uh, rowing and as the last ones there are also uh, traditional Finnish wooden boats which are rowed with the kind of non-feathering oars so mm. there is a huge uh, number of different uh, boat types we, and, and indoor rowers are also boat types there in the in the in the main screen yeah and then you select one of those and that's it yeah so uh, we have different algorithms in our app for mm -hmm. each of these so it's important that you choose the right boat or erg type and of course this uh, this pod also goes on uh, different locations in the different machines so on the concept 2 um, the pod goes on the the seat of the machine and on the rp3 the pod goes on the frame um, of the machine and the same for the slides there we have slightly different uh, algorithms but um, Yes, yeah, so it's crucial that you place the pod on the correct location. So we, we have a picture here that you could perhaps show, showing uh, the, the example uh, position of, of the pod on on an RP3. So again, the um, the phone uh, should be placed rigidly. With we we have a holder for for the phone as well. The, the phone is on the handle, showing the instant feedback of you're rowing and then the pod uh, is is on the frame um of, of the machine yeah brilliant so that mount for the phone on the handle is standard across any rowing machine but the position of the pod is principally the point of difference that's correct right. yes exactly yeah. and there is one more option for uh, attaching the pod to the to the um, uh, static ergo so uh, instead of putting that on your seat you can also attach the pod to your seat pad. So we have this uh, uh, Citius Remex uh, uh, nice seat pad. So you can put our uh, ah. pod here on this wedge and, and bring this with you when you are going to the gym or wherever you are going. You have a kind of a smart seat with you. And of course, that. that works on the boat as well. Yeah, this works uh, absolutely in the boat too. It's, it's a nice uh, method of uh, carrying your pod, pod with you. Plus, that seat is quite quite nice, especially in the Finnish winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Scandinavian innovation throughout here. I bet the uh, Danes never knew how helpful they were being to the Finns. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect fit for our pod, that uh, wedge in the seat. It's fantastic. So that's really clear. So the different mounting positions and the selection in the software of what machine or rowboat you're using is absolutely critical to your varying algorithms. Yes, and the positioning of the pod as well. So we and have uh, instructions. It must be a certain direction. You can't put it the wrong way around and it must be flat rather than tilted uh, for the algorithms to work well. But we have and made you, quite good instructions. When you mount it, is that a permanent mounting glued on permanently or is it removable? The pod. Uh, so we, we, the, the pod is inside a, a, a clip uh, oh, like, no. like this. Um, and there um, you can, you can um, charge it uh, with USB. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, the, the clip is, um, is removable you can uh, put it on the oar in a special strap that we have made and mm -hmm. then this same uh, holder can go on the on the seat of the mm -hmm. uh, on the or erg as well mm -hmm. and and you you need to charge it let's say every second week or something like mm -hmm. that so so the battery is very very good although it has a very high frequency of urge it's sending the data so you don't need to charge it every day that's really important to know. You talked a little bit about in the boat um, about the seat, uh, the angles of the oars. Do you have a view about what sort of angles people should be having at the catch and the finish relative to the pin in the mm. boat? Yeah, so that, there, that's a difference that we have to 
some of the other uh, nice rowing technologies that are out there. We don't uh, measure the, the forward and back angles, but we provide just the full stroke angle, um, which is uh, uh, the reason for this is because it's, it's, it's actually quite a simple product like this that you just clip on the oar in 10 seconds and you don't need to calibrate it. So that's why we don't know what the zero level is, but we provide just the full angle. And um, then what what that uh, full stroke angle is uh, or should be is, is quite individual. And I would say uh, for a, a rower, it's quite useful to see how those angles change as you get um, tired uh, they tend to get then uh, smaller um, but yeah that's for on water rowing unfortunately we don't provide references like we do for indoor rowing so in indoor rowing we have uh, the virtual coach which has clear limits for what each of the metrics should be but for on water rowing uh, currently we just provide the the data which then the coach uh, can uh, assess fantastic, fantastic. Now, going back to Neil's remarks, he talks about when he has a good row, the numbers obviously usually reflect his feeling. And he says that this feeling is especially true on the dynamic rowers like the RP3. He said, if I'm connecting to the work at the catch by driving through the foot stretcher and I avoid grabbing with my arms and upper body, the catch is more dynamic, powerful and fluid. The scores awarded by the virtual coach set at challenging, which is his personal preference, do represent a robust technical model with dynamic rhythm and not just a bunch of numbers with a robotic feel to the rowing stroke. So talk us through the different hierarchies of the virtual coach and how you can make them uh, improve you. Mm. So we have three levels. Uh... We recommend that when you start using the rowing app, you should start with easy, the easy level. Um, and then once you get all balls green reasonably easily, then you can graduate to the next level, which is the moderate level. And uh, when, once you are um, a great moderate level rower, then after that you can um, gra graduate to the most challenging level, which of course is the challenging coach. Um, um, and yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, that, that that is that is the way it works, and and a kind of we provide this uh, uh, rowing score as mm -hmm. a result, which is something between forty and one hundred, and uh, something <clears throat> over ninety-five. It really requires that you need to concentrate on everything, and um, yeah, here I have uh, shared here a, a picture which shows the kind of uh, technique summary that you are awarded with after your session so i have noticed that this actually helps when i know when i'm doing a, a hard long piece i was doing one hour on on tuesday and i had decided that i would do one hour um and um then this this the fact that i had i was measuring my technique and i knew that i want to share this with my peers we have this indoor rowing group in finland and i had decided in advance that <laughs> i want to share my one hour workout to to show everyone that i did the one hour workout um, with so good technique with good technique so it uh, this it helped me finish the one hour in reasonably reasonably good form because I, I i wanted this to say 60 minutes and it was 1506 strokes um, and then i was able to get with the moderate coach uh green balls for on all positions except for one um so mm -hmm. one thing which we have on the backlog is that these uh numbers uh are the same uh, irrespective of your um, if with your gender, for example. So for women, it's it's harder to get a, a green leg speed because this is it correlates with your the power in your legs. So you just need to kick so hard to make this green. So that's maybe something we need to work on because otherwise it's a little bit un, unfair. 
But we need uh, to keep in mind that, of course, Roa can change their uh, drag factor. That is so, true. So it's a kind of easier putting putting closer to Chiro with the uh, with ladies. Yeah. So, so the challenging coaches, it's as its name says, it is quite challenging to get everything green. Uh, but we are measuring technique rather than power in all of the balls except for the leg speed one. Yes. Which is related to power. And also the kind of next idea in our backlog. Uh, backlog is a kind of place where we have these new ideas and we put them in a different order is to kind of it's not big step from here to go to gamification so yes. that uh, that uh, uh, people or rowers can start to compare their their results and different aspects of that just run us through the five balls again what does each one measure um we measure rhythm here this by the way you can uh, get for free without the pod uh, then we measure the uh, the style, and the uh, that measures how uh, front loaded your technique is. Uh, we measure uh, the leg speed uh, and uh, the leg rhythm, and then finally and very importantly the seat stopped, which measures how segmented your rowing style is, how long you will keep the seat stationary while your body and hands do do the work yeah if if we select here one picture where we show the kind of yeah this one so here are two uh two rowers the very novice kind of very starting from the scratch on the right side and a good good one on the on the left side and if you are looking those curves i mean um, you, you can see differences and and our algorithms are kind of uh changing those uh, curves and numbers to kind of visible or easy to understand format for the for the rower talk us through the two curves let's start with the red one what do you see the red one is the novice rower uh, so this is the handle speed during the drive and the handle speed during the recovery and uh, the corresponding seat speed during the drive. And then you can see the seat doesn't stop at all, but it uh, goes straight away back to recovery. So there's no period where the seat speed would be uh, zero. So that's the difference between the novice and the experienced rower. The, the blue one is the experienced rower where the, the solid curve again is the handle graph and the dashed is the corresponding seat graph whether this is the leg drive then the seat is stationary while the graph is zero here and then this is the recovery where the seat returns back to catch yeah uh -huh. so on the negative part of the graph in the red line this uh, novice rower is moving very quickly back towards yes. the catch yes. so the line goes deep below the horizontal Yes, plus you can see the ratio of the drive to the recovery is quite uh, high. So mm -hmm. the recovery is uh, is almost the same time as the, the uh, drive. And the other thing we can see from here is that this, uh, this uh, novice rower is opening his back immediately. So it, when you start to open your back, of course, it means that it, it kind of uh, slows down your seat. So... Uh, the the angular um, explain your you know uh, yeah so when you when you open up your uh, back uh, straight away like uh, we tend to do in the Finnish wooden boats then that is uh, straight away visible in these graphs uh, but this is something that we we don't um, uh, these graphs are a little bit technical perhaps that's yeah, why yeah. we did those those balls sure. Sure. this uh, this, this start technique uh, uh, here on the right hand side it, it has been generated so that uh, one of us has been trying to row as badly as possible mm -hmm. because that's also very important for the coach to understand to make it as straight as possible because then coach really needs what this everything means mm. So we have some uh, competitions so that uh, try to row as well as you can and then mm -hmm. as bad as you can. And what is the difference of these two numbers? If you are get a good uh, big uh, number, big difference for these numbers, then it re really means that you are kind of, you understand how this works. Mm.
Can you use the mouth to point to the place where you can see that they're opening their shoulders up at the catch? Uh, so that the back is starting to open too early. That's easy to see because those gradients, those um, the gradients, gradients of this uh, seat and uh, and the handle, they go to the different direction from the very beginning. So you can see the blue rower, the seat, and the handle. They start here with the same slope. Oh. The, angle, the angle of the seat and the handle is pretty much the same. Whereas uh, if you open up your back straight away, then that's visible as a uh, change in. You see this uh, the seat and the handle graph. They uh, they are not following the same line to start with. Yeah. So yeah. Very divergent. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I see. Yeah. So. You're making power, but not using the seat. So that makes it absolutely clear that you are probably making that power either by grabbing with your arms or by swinging your yeah. back. Yeah, and by the way, grabbing with your arms, I have a little bit of problem with that. And you can see that on, on the blue curve. So you will see that there is a, this kind of small, uh, what do you call this? Uh, hump. Hump. Small mm -hmm. hump. It means that I am starting to grab with my... Uh, with my arms a little bit too early and it's visible here that that's my my personal issue <laughs> oh so that, thank you that's a fascinating insight into the potential so let's move on to who should be using the Quisca rowing app it's for people who want to enjoy the indoor rowing machine more it's to make rowing more enjoyable and so that you can row longer which good good technique and and then you can get fit faster so it's it's really for any gym rower who wants to have fun and get into this kind of a flow state while on the indoor rowing machine and row for an hour and enjoy it um, and then of course if you are an on water rower then absolutely then you can uh, gain from it by looking really into the detail also using the portal Fantastic. Now, um, I'm just putting your website address up on the screen. So it's rowingperformance.com. Can you talk us through what's on the website that people can find? We have a guide to measuring rowing technique, which is uh, actually it's a, we have it printed here as well. It's a, a almost 50 page uh, guide, which you can download for free, which uh, explains a little bit about rowing technique and about measuring it. And we also compare ourselves with other um, gadgets in the field. Um, and then, of course, you can buy our pods um, and subscription. Uh, via our website and we also have quite a lively uh, blog we tend to write uh, as, as often as we can about rowing technique and rowing in Finland and where else can people follow you online uh, we are um, on um, Instagram and we're on uh, Facebook uh, uh, and on Twitter as well, I think, yes. <laughs> and uh, we, we do love uh, feedback. We have quite active uh, customers who, who stay in touch with us, uh, but, but we do love feedback. So um, active uh, comments to our social media channels are, are very, very welcome. And on, on Instagram, we are called Rowing Perf, as in Rowing Performance. Uh, on Facebook, you can find, find us under Kuiske or Rowing Performance. Yeah, okay. I think. I'm going to leave the last word to uh, Neil Bergenroth again. And he says, um, as a result of using Kuiske, the art of rowing is still very much alive alongside the scientific and quantitative aspect of this tool, in my opinion. In conclusion, I appreciate having the technical data available and the Quisca tools provide another robust solution to one aspect of my remote coaching business. So if anyone wants to find Neil, his Twitter handle is Coach Bergenroth, B-E-R-G-E-N-R-O-T-H. And he's also called that on Facebook and his website is coachbergenroth.com. So obviously thank him very much for giving us his advanced feedback. And I'm guessing he's been a very long time user of the Quisca app. Yes, yes, uh, he's, he's been using our app for a, a long time. We do have some even longer customers. Uh, we have customers from all around the world 
we have some customers in Japan who mm -hmm. have been uh, rowing indoors for many years. Many years. I mean, in fact, <clears throat> he started with the uh, older model of uh, Concept 2, and I think he's still using that. Yeah. Yeah. B model. Wow. It's been a while since I've seen one of those. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? I hope you all have some enjoyable rowing coming up this winter, indoors or on water, wherever you are. And I hope you guys manage to row on Christmas Eve. It sounds wonderful. And I'm going to go immediately and look at the Finnish uh, uh, traditional boats, because uh, I think traditional boat rowing is, is enjoying a resurgence around the world. Hmm. Yes. Christina and uh, Penti, thank you very much. It's been really delightful speaking to both of you and for your enthusiasm and your creativity in making a really usable app that provides both the rower and the coach some deep insights into things that they can improve while they're rowing indoors or on the water. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Till next time, listeners, you can find this episode on our website, rowing.chat. And of course, we're also on YouTube and SoundCloud. Please sign up so that you can get uh, the episodes emailed to you. It's only once a week and it just has a link to everything we've published in the week. And tell your friends, send us a rating or review on iTunes or your favorite podcast app so that more people get to know the fun things that are going on in the Rowing Chat podcast network. Till next time, bye-bye.